Now, what I'd like to talk to you about is kind of a different way of looking at shell shock or PTSD. First, I want to talk about the real physical changes that happen in the brain. Um, second of all, I'd like to present it to you as um, a way that our brains adapt to a traumatic situation. In fact, while you're in the traumatic situation, particularly if it's combat, many of the symptoms, many things we've talked about are very helpful in surviving. I think there's some reason to believe that some of our best soldiers, most effective soldiers, will end up having this disorder. And part of the difficulty is making the shift from a combat situation to a peacetime situation. Um, and the last thing I'll, I'll stress is our thinking, just in general, not even in relationship to the clinical aspects, that fear and part of our emotional memories as human beings have helped us as a species because it developed, it's, it's given us an early warning system. I mean, we think about fear as being, oh, I'm afraid. And we don't think about the function it serves in our, in our world. And in fact, we're elegantly designed um, organisms that have a really a miraculous way of dealing with dangerous and traumatic situations, which have helped us survive. And it, it's, the more I learn about it, the more I'm kind of in awe. Um, so, I'm the neurologist, you know, so, or the guy who's interested in neuropsychology and so forth, so I, I get excited about these kinds of things. But what I'd like to talk to you about is the neurology of PTSD. Um, we're going to do that. And for years, um, the medical profession, scientists have looked for one part of the brain that was responsible for feelings, kind of the emotional um, part of the brain that produced all kinds of feelings. And what we found, particularly recently, is different feelings probably utilize different parts of the brain. And again, as I mentioned, we're even thinking less about what the feeling is and more about what's its function. And one of the things we found about danger is that the limbic system, particularly the amygdala, I've got, one, I've got a little red button here, um, right here, oops, and the hippocampus are particularly important in helping us process and um, react to dangerous situations. And in fact, when we're presented with a dangerous or traumatic situation, I think it's fascinating because there's two paths in our brain, or two systems in our brain, that process that information. We can talk about neural paths, pathways and so forth, but I, I like to simplify it and talk about two roads. One is the fast road and one is the slow road. And human beings are kind of remarkable. We often have redundant systems. I mean, we have two eyes, two ears, two kidneys, and it, it, it's a real benefit for that overlap and redundancy. In the brain, we have these two systems. The first, which I'll talk about, is the slow road, or the slow system, is the one we've known about for years. If we're walking in the woods and we see a snake, we all kind of think about that our reaction is we see it, I was told this morning that those eyeballs look weird. <laughs> kind of scary. But that's what happens when you leave home without your, your skull. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so you see the object, and then it gets, goes through our brain to our visual cortex. And that helps us identify what we're looking at, think about the information we have about that object. Like, a rattle is a bad thing. If the snake has a rattle, uh-oh. Or if it's got a triangular head, that's a very bad thing. And then, if it is dangerous, we send um, a message to this little guy, which is the amygdala, which is kind of the alarm system of the body. And then, two things happen. It sends out um, 
messages to our chemical system, our hormonal system, which kicks us into gear, and then we can use all our knowledge to develop strategies to figure out how to behave. Okay, it's, it's a very important system. It certainly is there, and it, it helps us learn and anticipate dangerous situations. But it turns out that there's another system going on simultaneously. What happens is we see the snake, it goes to our visual thalamus, and if there's a, a, a memory that this might be dangerous, it sends the information directly to our amygdala, and the amygdala immediately sends out very similar information, which sets off a whole stream of chemicals and hormones, which I'll talk about in a second, and also produces the behaviors of either the fight, flight, or freeze responses, which are unconscious, they're instinctive, and sometimes they can, very often, they mean the difference between life and death when we have to respond very quickly. Now here's, here's the deal, I talked about the fast and slow system. This fast system takes half as long as the slow system. Literally, it takes half the time for us to react. So it's a very effective, powerful system when you're in a lot of danger and you have to respond quickly or instinctively. It saves our lives. Now, it doesn't, now kind of the wonders don't end there because it turns out there are two, once we experience that tra traumatic event, traumatic event um, there are two memory systems that kick, kicked in. One is the one we usually think about, which is a conscious memory about the event and about the emotions. In other words, we can think back and say, geez, I was scared when I saw that snake. Or we can tell our friends about seeing the snake. I get a great story about being stuck in America, uh, on top of a mountain with my brother in Switzerland, which I can tell, and I have memories of how it felt. And, but also, at the same time, there's a whole other system, very complex system of emotional memories that are unconscious, that we're not even aware of, that um, generate from the amygdala. And it's kind of like the amygdala underlines the salient details about that experience. Um, if you were in a jungle, kind of the sights and the smells, what the twigs sounded like as you um, were walking on the sticks, um, maybe the smells that were there of gunpowder and explosives. And it makes those memories and those stimuli very powerful. And what happens? Jeez. <laughs> Is there a medic in the house? <laughs> Here's Brian, he'll, he'll save me.